So as the turn was processing at the end of that last video, Bohemia once again took Amsterdam. Now this isn't as big of a conquest as it was initially, because now Amsterdam is at one. One population. Yeah, so, I mean, it's uh, it's not as, as crazy, but it's still interesting because this is, I'm kind of interested in what the world is, how the world's going to react here, because this is kind of messed up. You know, Bohemia hasn't ever really been on the, the wrong side of history. They haven't really, uh, maybe in the very beginning, I don't know, because I, mean, I don't know how much they, they did take over Poland, um, but that was several centuries ago. I don't know if the AI is really calculating for that anymore. Um, Bohemia has been quiet as of the last, like, I don't know, five, six, seven videos. So I'm wondering if this is, I don't know, going to make some people upset, especially Bohemia being surrounded by so many other countries. Uh, it could be, uh, it could be bad. So we've got several countries all trying to rush in after the Dutch. Ooh. So have, wait, did the Portuguese try this yet? Portugal has been pretty quiet. Uh, France has been going after Bavaria. We'll see if Portugal can actually manage to do something here. It is still going to be tough, though, because Bavaria is, you know, just as high, I'm thinking literacy-wise, as the Portuguese. This is, they're just going to grind away at each other, I'm thinking for the most part. The Pope and Switzerland have peaced out. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, gone to war. That doesn't matter. Um, let's go and check on the Baltic Sea. This is where the other point of interest is. There hasn't been, there's no war right here, right? Yeah, okay, so Sweden is kind of playing it smart. It's going to be tough to take any of these Prussian cities. Maybe Utrecht is going to be a little bit easier, but no matter what, it's going to be difficult. So they should probably slow their roll a little bit. Yeah, slow their roll, because uh, there's too, too many things happening here. It's, there's not enough tiles, I don't think, to take these cities. Uh, this is where the other thing, I, I don't know why I missed this, but Morocco and Mali are at war. And uh, this is a pretty major front, especially when, like, I've been underestimating Mali. Mali's got some big population here, too. And they're going after another settler, or they're going after another city, I should say. We'll see if Sunghai... Dang! Is Sunghai the new... Is that the biggest population? I know that Warsaw's at 37. No, it's at 38 now. Okay, so Warsaw's still the biggest city, I think, in the world. We also saw the fall of Russia in the last one. So, yeah, the Goths are looking pretty good. And the Prussians are moving in after, I think, the final Dutch colony. I think if this city gets taken, then that's... Oh, no, there's still this one. And that's, yeah, that's pretty safe in the corner there. At least as long as Finland doesn't do anything. Finland's been so quiet and peaceful, it's weird. I would think that they would have done a lot more here. So, um, if Portugal were to take over Munich, though... I don't know. I think we'll quickly see Portugal rise in the demographics. Right now, they're kind of like half and half with Bohemia. Well, not really half and half. I think Bohemia has like, they're leading in five categories. Portugal's leading in two. If they take over Munich, Munich though, uh, that is where things are going to get pretty interesting. And there'll finally be a border between Portugal and Bohemia. So that is also kind of, uh, would be kind of fun kind of fun in a weird like psycho way because it's probably gonna be nuclear war which means that thousands hundreds maybe millions of people will die so I'm y yeah <laughs> so yeah kind of fun in this virtual world okay digital world I guess so Flanders is going after Rotterdam Switzerland is like kind of just chilling they're not really doing anything anymore maybe maybe this is it maybe this is the only thing that will result from this, like, Dutch coalition. Ooh, I do want to see how Portugal's going to handle this. The problem is they don't have open borders through Zurich, which is a which is a big deal. And these mountains are going to make it so difficult. So difficult to travel around here. And then, yeah, there's just no way. Not without Bohemia's help. Unless Bohemia also declares... It's only Bohemia, to be honest. Bavaria's going to lose military strength, that's for sure. But the only person that could actually feasibly take over Bavaria is Bohemia. It's destiny. It's straight up destiny. Like, it's just, that's it. And we've been saying it the entire video, too. The entire series, I mean. So, I don't know. Yeah, we don't, we don't know if that would, I don't, I don't know if that take place. Anything happening in the Italian peninsula looks about the same. Bohemia is now declared 
two distant wars. They're still at war with Byzantium, I think, and now after the Dutch, and they're not afraid of sending troops through other countries' territories to take over cities. They've just been first successful with Amsterdam. They've been trying it, like, the entire game, though. Wow, you guys really want this city, this one specific city. Bohemia is the only one with, like, kind of modern era ships, so destroyers and um, other things like that. Well, just destroyers right now. I don't see any battleships. Yeah, so just, just that. So, but still, they'd have a lot of success if they were to declare some sort of Baltic war. There you go, Finland. Well, I mean, Finland's that's after Bavaria. It's kind of strange. Oh. It looks like this should go to Flanders, I think. No, that Bohemian infantry could... No. No, you can't. I don't think you could. Who moves first? They're all modded civs. Obviously, if Bohemia takes us over, this is huge. If it's Switzerland, then it's a little bit different. Uh... Yeah, if it's Switzerland, then I... I don't know. I mean, that's that's good for them, but more than likely that just means Switzerland's gonna die at some point. Maybe the French will take them down. Okay, so we're moving through the Vanilla Civs. Again, it's a huge mistake for France to not go to war right now with the Dutch. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they had a declaration of of, of friendship. So that would be a mistake for them to break that. Break that. Let's see what Portugal does. Again, Portugal, who I think might be even stronger... Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to get just destroyed here. Bohemia's too powerful. Flanders took it over. Okay. Okay, Flanders. And hey, you have, uh, you're have you on Bohemia's good side at the moment, so you don't really need to worry too much. Well, maybe if, maybe maybe Flanders needs to worry about Bavaria, but not at the moment. Bavaria's way too distracted. They're probably freaking out right now. And this should go to... Well, this is going to be tough, because notice there's a lot of different types of red here. There's Bohemian red, and then there's British red. So it could go to either one. This could still be a pretty big success. As long as the British get a foothold here. This isn't Normandy, but this is like in modern day Belgium. If they take Brussels, that would be big. Again, two modded civs though. I don't know who who processes first. The Celts have been quiet. The Celts, the French, there have been a lot of quiet civs actually. Byzantium and Sweden. Assyria. Now did Assyria take over the Ottomans? Nope, they're struggling. That was a weird war for Assyria to declare, especially since Assyria has no fleet. So I don't know why they, they did that. But Byzantium is kind of stressed, I think, by Bohemia back on uh, back in Europe. So I don't think it, it should be fine. Yeah, this conflict's kind of cooled down. Nothing really happening there. All right, so who, who takes this over? Bohemia moves first, and I'm, I, I think... Oh, wait. Ooh... Is this Bohemia too? Yeah, Bohemia's going to take this. And, uh, bam. Harlem. I'm imagining that's Harlem. Was taken by Prussia. So the Dutch only have one call. Actually, they have two cities left. But the Dutch will probably still exist here. Uh, I don't know. There's a submarine. That's a modern ship. There you go. That's a modern ship. Duh, Drew. I don't know why I missed that. Oh, yeah. They only have destroyers as their modern ship. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. All right. So Bohemia's going to take this over, I think. Yes, they should. Carthage has adopted order. That's not smart. You should have chosen autocracy, but okay. Unless you're Florence. If you're Florence, you can choose whatever, and then I'm going to be like, yeah. Yeah, that makes total logical sense. You guys totally did the right thing there. Flanders is kind of helping here, too. Oh, let's see what Assyria is going to try. It's a smart war if they would have declared after they took over Istanbul. This is just going to make it so much more difficult to take over the Ottomans for the Assyrians. I would really love to see now, since the Assyrians have kind of regrown their, or rebuilt their military, an Egyptian-Assyrian war would be interesting. Unless, of course, Assyria loses all their military units during this conflict. Yep, Bohemia took it over. So Bohemia grabbed two cities, Flanders grabbed one. The Dutch will exist in, you know, northern Finland, northern modern-day modern day Finland, and we are approaching turn 400. Yeah, we need to check on religion in the next one. I keep forgetting to check on religion, even though it's, like, probably not having as big of, a, of an impact. Confucianism looks like it's pretty successful here. 
Islam has been almost kicked out, except for, wow, Milan is the only Islamic city, or Muslim city, I should say, in all of Iberia. That's really re weird. Yeah, that's really weird. There's clearly, a, like, a religious war taking place. Uh, whenever I say religious wars, now I think of Civ 6. Like, Civ 6, religious wars, that sounds so much fun. Because we never really saw, you never really, you could always, like, just define it randomly as a religious war, but, like, Civ 6 is actually going to have religious wars? What? Yes. Let's do that. Crusades. Like, that sounds like, that sounds like it's going to be a load of fun. All right, so the Pope and the Dutch have peaced out. The Goths and the Vandals have peaced out. Well, I wonder if Armenia is going to try anything here. Now, this is good for the Prussians, because now the Prussians can get the hell out of here. Oh, Danzig. They settled Danzig. So the Prussians can get out of here, go back, just, just in case Sweden tries something else. Oh, now Sweden has submarines. Oh, they both have submarines. Never mind. So uh, copper is now banned, and... Uh, Byzantium is... Oh, that's interesting. Embargo Byzantium was not passed. Nade from so many people. Look at, all these, look at all these votes for no. And that's really cool. Looking into that a little bit deeper, that's kind of cool because Byzantium is kind of that... Kind of this big empire in the center of the map, so there's a lot of people probably trading with them. That kind of explains why so many people were like, no, don't embargo Byzantium. I like that. That's, uh, that's kind of cool. I should probably look into that. It's like... Clearly, people like Byzantium a lot. Constantinople, a 30 city or 30 population. That's pretty good too. Armenia and Songhai. Let's go and check on Morocco and Mali. Yep, Byzantium is going to go after at least Byzantium. Or I'm sorry, Byzantium is going to go after Armenia. That's that's the declaration of war, not not the other way around. I was going to say Armenia is going after Theodora, but that no, that's not right. And this is kind of cooled down. Mali doesn't look like they have much more. They don't have many military units left. Well, maybe Morocco's going to try to move in. Kaaba. Kaaba under siege. I don't know why I said it like that. France, I think, is still at war with Scotland, so they might be trying. Yeah, they are. They're, it's blockaded. Anything else? Ooh. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, um, Sweden's still at war with the Prussians. The Goths, now after they destroyed Russia, is going to go after Prussia. Uh, with Portugal's help, Portugal won't be able to do anything except for in Geneva. Now, this could be, once again, it could act as that distraction that the Prussians... Because the Prussians were already over here in Harlem. They're already here. So they're going to... Well, first of all, they're going to probably take over Geneva. But the point is, it's going to be a distraction. So the Goths won't have to face as many units here in like you know most of the Prussian power comes from like this region not anywhere else and there's not many resources out there anyways so that's kind of a big deal Assyria and Arabia going after the tights now oh that's why yeah that's right we knew that was wow they took that over in one turn or was it two turns because they declared the war last time so yeah like two turns that's uh that's pretty impressive it's a huge mess that's going on right here. Bohemia seems to have given up on their Byzantine War. It's about time. I'd rather see Bohemia. You know, I didn't realize this. Another key to a Bohemian victory not only lies inside of like the destruction of Bavaria, but also the destruction of Hungary. I completely forgot. Remember those, that, that small point where I was like, oh my god, Hungary. Hungary's going to do something. Hungary's hungry. And they're doing it. Uh, how many times is that joke made? Through? Come on. Be original. But uh, it, I thought that there'd be a point where we'd see Hungary kind of rise up. Rise up and take the throne of power. But uh, now I'm starting to look at this and I'm like, oh, wait. They would stand zero chance against Bohemia. They would lose at least four cities, if not everything. I think Hungary has a colony. They do. But uh, nonetheless, that could also be the key to a Bohemian victory is just take over Hungary. And then you, it, it would kind of depend also on what, what's happening happening diplomatically, of course, because uh, who knows what's going to happen out of the Gothic-Prussian War. The Goths look good. Although, Prussia is more defended than, than before. Maybe Bohemia will get in after this. They are distracted. That's certainly, that's certainly happening. And Portugal is going to need to peace out because this is a useless war. 
I guess France and Bohemia are cool too. See, being in the middle of the map early on, actually up until like the late, late part of the game, is usually, usually pretty bad. So the fact that Bohemia has made it this far is huge. But now that Bohemia is like among the strongest, I don't know, we haven't checked the demographics in a while, but because they're among the strongest, probably in the top three, and they're in the middle of the map, that means that they have lots of choices. Lots of different areas they can go to war with. They could go after France, or Switzerland, or Flanders, or Bavaria, or Hungary, or Prussia, or even the Goths. Like that, this is where being in the middle works really well. Or, I completely forgot, everybody in, in the Baltic Sea. So yeah, I mean, if I was a betting man, if I was in Vegas right now, I think Bohemia is going to win this game. But I still don't know what's going to happen throughout the world. That's where things get really interesting. Bohemia will certainly be, I, I mean, if when we have a straw poll, let's say if we have a straw poll, I'm just going to write Bohemia's down, Bohemia's name right now in the in the poll. I don't know how we're going to do the, the whole victory. If nobody... Yeah, I mean, if it's not even contested, if Bohemia does one of two of the things, you know, takes out Hungary or takes out Bavaria and nothing else happens throughout the world, which that won't happen because clearly there's lots of things happening throughout the world. Um, but yeah, we won't do a straw poll if Bohemia is the clear victory. I'd like to... I like doing a straw poll, but it's always, like, really uh, controversial. Like, every single time. It's always controversial because there's always people voting for the other sieve and it just yeah that's why sometimes i i don't know i i don't know the straw polls i love including you guys but at the same time it sucks because people freak out well because because the straw polls are always always geared towards like people are picking their own sieve that they like and that that's always because like bohemia is clearly number one right now but no one really picked bohemia in video one so P bohemia as a whole wouldn't get that many votes they would. They just wouldn't get as many votes as they probably should because there would be more people voting for, like, the British, you know. I'm not saying the British didn't do bad, but they probably won't be in the straw poll. If the British are in the straw poll, that's where things get become a problem because people vote for the British or they'll, you know, vote for, uh, I don't know, who else is really popular? Rome. Rome is a big one. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Rome is also a big one. So we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. If the Goths just start ripping through Prussia, though, that is gonna be uh, that's gonna be a problem because I do think the Goths are really strong. I don't know. It'd be tough though because this is where things get interesting. I completely forgot about this. About two or three videos, I predicted the Goths would go after Prussia. This is exactly what I had said, and um, it looks like they're gonna take another city over. This is where things could end for the Goths. They need to be really worried about the Huns. Now, there looks like there's a good relationship as, as of the moment. There's open borders. They need to keep that. They need to keep that for a long time, for at least like 50 turns, because they need to destroy Prussia, rebuild their military, and then go after Attila. Or go after Bohemia. I don't know. But anyways, uh, we'll talk about that in the next one. So I think this Gothic-Prussian War is pretty much the biggest conflict we've had in this entire series. Uh, the next video should be really interesting, especially to see kind of what the neighbors do about the Gothic aggression, I guess. But anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.